accounting statement of cash flows indirect method. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email address, and our phone number. I wanted to add on to our statement of cash flows discussion and talk more specifically about statement of cash flows from operations and the indirect method. So what we have here is an income statement from a company. We have income statement detail at the top and then at the bottom we have additional information that happened in the company. So what we use this data to do is on this tab create indirect statement of cash flows. So let's look at the additional information first. Remember that there's three types of cash flow operations, investing, financing. And on additional information on land purchases I have that's a use of cash for investing. Buying and selling things, assets, is cash flow from investing. So we buy some land and we also buy some equipment. Those are both investing uses of cash. Then we see down here that we have some equipment and we have an equipment transaction. We have the cost of equipment at 132000 so when we make the journal entry that is the asset that we take off the books at original cost. We have accumulated depreciation of 112000 We remove that accumulated depreciation by debiting. We have sales proceeds of 20000 That's an increase in cash, which is a debit. And you can see that debits equal credits, so we do not have any gain or loss on sale. If debits did not equal credits, we would have a gain or loss on sale. Finally, at the bottom of the page, financing is a source of cash. Raising money for your business or paying it back or paying a dividend is a financing source. And then one other detail we need to note is, is that depreciation expense is a non-cash item. When your car is depreciating for a particular year, we don't write a check for that depreciation. It's a non-cash item. So I wrote next to that non-cash item operating activity. Now let's go over to the answer key here and see how the statement of cash flow sets up. Just for the operating section here, you can see that we start at the top with net income, 142000 and we end up with the bottom at cash flow from operating activities. And what happens in the middle here is that we are reversing out the effects of net income on the books. The easiest way to remember this formula, and it's not easy, but I would say the most efficient way to remember it is, is that we add back in decreases in current assets and increases in current liabilities. So, one thing that we did on the other page here was, we went through all the investing, financing, additional information. And when we jump over here, what we're using is changes in the current assets and current liabilities. So for example, merchandise inventory, which is a an asset account, went down. So we add back to so that 16000 went down. Prepaid rent is a current asset. That went down. We added back. Salaries payable increased 4000 That's a current liability. We add that in. So these are all the additions based on the formula that we have over here. Then at the bottom it says we subtract increases in the current assets and decreases in current liabilities. So accounts receivable went up 8000 We subtract that. Accounts payable, which was used to pay inventory, <clears throat> had a change and we add that back as well. Actually this account is this account is inventory not accounts payable. And the other thing we have to add back because it's included in net income but it is not it does not affect cash is the depreciation expense that we saw on the other page. So if we add all that up we get 170,200. So that takes care of operating activities. Now let's go down here and let's talk about investing activities. 
We wrote a check for land purchases. That's a decrease in cash. We had equipment purchases and we net out the sales proceeds that we got. Cash out the door of 80,000. We add those two. We get a cash flow out of 192. Finally, when we issue stock, we exchange equity or ownership and, and we get back cash. So cash went up 50,000. And you can see that our change in finance gets 50,000. So what we've done so far is we've added, we've calculated operating activity change in cash, investing change in cash, and financing change in cash. The last step to do statement of cash flows is we take the beginning past cash balance from the balance sheet, we take the ending cash balance from the balance sheet, and we look at the difference. And the difference in the two amounts that we get from the balance sheet will agree to the sum of these three numbers, operating, investing, financing. Finally, the place I got those changes in the balance sheet numbers is up here at the top. So one way to set up your question is to take your balance sheet, take your ending balance, your beginning balance, and make another column where you have increases and decreases in the current assets and the current liabilities. For example, we see that equipment decreased 32,000 and if and we see that accounts receivable increased 8,000. So if we go over to our chart, there is the $8,000 increase in accounts receivable and that increase in current assets is subtracted. So all of these cells are linked to the change in the net assets account. So when you're setting up, when you're doing the indirect method of statement of cash flows for operating, you need to have this column which shows the increase, the decreases, the changes, so that you can link that into the operating section because the operating section is all about changes in current assets and current liabilities. That's as far as we're going to take it on part 2A of intermediate accounting. We have more videos not on the web. It's a web page that lists more videos by topic where you can access either the spreadsheet we use to create the video templates or the videos themselves. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You can email me for a complete list of our YouTube videos. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.